welcome again to Carver Arena, Peoria, Illinois. Tonight, it's the championship game of the 1998 Illinois Boys Class A Basketball Tournament as the top-ranked Red Devils of Spring Valley Hall take on the Vikings of Nauvoo, Calusa. Coverage of the IHSA Boys Class A Championships games are proudly presented by Pepsi and by country companies. We have come down to the final game here tonight. It is Spring Valley Hall, the favorite coming into the tournament against the upstart, Nauvoo Calusa. Hello again, everybody. Dave Bennett with former Chicago Bull, Norm Van Leer. March Madness has reached a crescendo here in central Illinois tonight. Spring Valley Hall undefeated, bidding to become the first team to go unbeaten and claim the Class A title since Teutopolis did it in 1986. It was a year ago that Spring Valley Hall lost in the championship game to Warsaw, and Norman was that night that guard Sean Jepson turned this floor into his own personal stage with 51 points. Yes, he did, and uh, we witnessed that, and uh, what a performance he had. I know he'll like to uh, change that in uh, at any time for a championship. And tonight's an opportunity to see what he can uh, really do along with his teammates. Jepson had 19 points this afternoon for Spring Valley Hall to get them here. And he's been averaging uh, just about 19 points in the tournament, a little bit under his season average. Now, stepping up for Nauvoo Calusa, which boasts a more balanced attack, has been senior guard David Griffith's double zero. He's had a magnificent tournament thus far. He's been averaging 16 points a game, shooting 70% from the floor, and he is 10 of 15 from three-point range. Well, that, that's the danger point, and that 70% is what uh, you need to at least take focus on. But I tell you, this guy is a leader of his team, but you mentioned something about balance attack. That is the key for this team to win. At the same time, there's a good bit of uh, uh, defense that uh, the Valley brings, the Hall brings to the table, so we'll see what happens uh, when the jump ball starts. All right, well, Spring Valley Hall, the favorite, the number one team. They've been on a mission all year to get here for this game tonight. Nobu Calusa has some other ideas. Coverage of the IHSA Boys Class A Championship games are proudly presented by Pepsi and by country companies. And we'll be back with much more after this. Welcome back to Carver Arena. We're with Coach Bryant with Spring Valley Hall. And Coach, you've had time to think about it. What is your game plan? Well, we're going to do try and do the same things we've done all year. We've, we've gotten the ball up and down the floor, play a little bit more aggressive defense on the perimeter. they got some real nice shooters out there. And hopefully we can get the ball out and, uh, and go with it. We're, we're trying to uh, establish an inside game with these guys tonight. We think we got a little size advantage in there. So if all those things come together, it should be a happy evening. Well, thank you very much. Good luck. And we'll be back. We're getting set for the championship game in Illinois Boys Class A basketball. But first, we'll yes, pause for the national the anthem. Flag with your hand over your heart. As guest soloist, Curtis Beheimer, a student at Rushville High School, sings the Star Spangled Banner. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave very nicely done the national anthem here at carver arena tonight there you see the red devils of spring valley hall and let's go right now to Yvonne Simmons standing by with the coach of the Vikings, Reno Pinkston. 
Coach, this team is undefeated. You guys have been pretty confident in this tournament. How can you beat them? Uh, we played two undefeated teams so far, AC Central and Farmington, and we played pretty well. We know that we've got to make it difficult on Sean Jefferson. Regardless of who scores, it's usually because of something he's created or problems he's caused. So we've got to make sure he doesn't have a career night and then also be able to uh, stop some of their big guys inside and the Anders kid from shooting three. So defensively, we're going to have to shut some people down. And offensively, anticipate them trying to be aggressive against us. And we need to handle their pressure early on. Okay, thank you. Good luck. Dave, back to you. All right, Ivana, AC Central was 30-0 and when they fell victim to the Vikings. And Farmington was 32-0 when they ran in to Nauvoo Calusa and saw their unbeaten record go by the boards. And they'll try to do it a three-peat, if you will, tonight against this Spring Valley Hall team. Let's go right now to the public address announcer here at Carver Arena, Paul Herzog, for the introduction. America's original March Madness. Tonight's Class A championship game in Carver Arena features the Spring Valley Hall Red Devils at a record of 32-0 and the Nauvoo Calusa Vikings 31 and 3. Let's meet the starting lineups. At a forward for Spring Valley, 6'6 senior, number 34, Joey Reed. At a forward for Nauvoo Calusa, a 6'1 senior, number 40, Doug Siegfried. The other forward for the Red Devils, the 6'1 senior, 22, Ryan Andres. The other forward for the Vikings, a 6'5 junior, number 42, Joel Wilson. At center for Spring Valley Hall, a 6'7 senior, number 45, Nick Sterling. At center for Nabu Kalusa, a 6'2 junior, number 52, Emmett Reitner. At a guard for Spring Valley, a six foot senior, number 10, Craig Olson. At a guard for Nabu Kalusa, 5'10 senior, double zero, David Griffiths. The other guard for the Red Devils, a 6'2 senior, number 20, Sean Jepson. And the other guard for the Vikings, a 5'9 senior, number 22, David Hemma. So there they are, the Vikings. There's Eric Bryant, head coach at Spring Valley Hall in his 14th year. And he's got an undefeated team, Reno Pinkston, in his fifth year at Nauvoo Caluso. 106 victories, 126 overall in his seven years as a high school coach. In the last three years, 75 and 15 at Nauvoo Caluso. Terry Elms, Don Fodor, and Rick Rungi are officials for this championship game here tonight before another sellout house here at Carver Arena. They just saw the third place game and now these teams will battle for the title. Well, it should be a good one, and uh, both teams use the team play as an approach, you know, spread the scoring around a little bit, play the defense. That's why you have the big dance, as we call it, when you do those particular things, and you do it on a consistent basis, and that's why you're here playing the championship. Coach Bryant giving a few final words to that man, Sean Jepson, who fouled out of the semifinal earlier today, but not before scoring 19 points in the win over Leo. Coach He's Bryant changed the uh, shirt, but not the suit. Not the suit. He's going <laughs> to wear that red suit, <laughs> and I'm sure he'll wear it to their yeah. postseason celebration as well. Sean Jepson, 51 points in the championship game a year ago in a losing cause against Warsaw, 92-85 in overtime. And both schools very well represented here tonight, as you might expect. It's going to be awfully noisy, Norm, I have a feeling, during the course of this game. Oh, there's no doubt about it. It seems like there's some type of equipment or personal change that uh, Jepson's going through, being taped or something. And that 
now the Vikings players being called back to their bench by Coach Pinkston. Looks like they're wrapping Jepson's right hand. He had a cut on the hand. Mm. It's a possibility. That's the shooting hand, and uh, I don't know what's happening. Maybe that a very aggressive uh, celebration type opening might have caused something. Ran into the camera in the celebration. Oh, that's what Joe was told to us. He ran into a camera. Well, oh well. They are obviously, although we have seen that he can shoot with either hand. Well, he, can, he can do his thing. But, uh, so, you know, you get that adrenaline that pumped up and you're ready to go, and all of a sudden, a little sideshow of uh, different attraction uh, starts. Could have, could have an effect. Who knows? Well, we'll keep an eye on that situation. And out onto the floor come the Red Devils. 32-0. They have outscored their opponents by an average of 24 points a game, counting the tournament games as well. That's that's a heck that's of a pretty impressive. That's very impressive. And Joe Wilson at 6'5 will jump center against 6'7 Nick Sterling. Red Devils in red. Hope you enjoy it. The Class A Championship is underway. And it landed two on one here for the Vikings. And flying in, Sean Jackson threw that right hand in there and committed the foul. Well, he, he went in there and tested it. Let's put it that way. But Right off the tip, Wilson to Reidner. Let's go to Yvonne Simmons. They're not exactly sure what happened to Jepson, but they're saying that he might need some stitches. They're going to get some stretch tape right now to put that around that cut. But it's right on his um, right hand, right at the knuckle of the first finger. So they're trying to... Widener makes the first free throw. Jepson sits down. See, I like to create a plastic glove. We still have a rubber glove. We have a peel of the fingertips. And you get out there and you put it on and peel it. Well, free throws are made. Well, Jepson, as we mentioned, he fouled out this afternoon. Not a guy you want in foul trouble, let alone the bench. That's it, especially starting this game. This is championship game, so. And Andres and Joey Reed. Nice spin along the baseline. Reed got it again. Out the basket. Now, that's the area of all the comparings and the matchups that you bring to the table, I think Hall has an advantage, at least the aggressive play on the boards. And if they can do that, control that, especially with Sterling not getting in foul trouble like he has in the last few games and playing ahead of game, that can be the difference for Hall more than anything else. Joey Reed shooting 53% from the line in the tournament. Foul was on Griffiths. First, Nobu Talusa foul. Here's David Hammond, their point guard and co-captain. Widener. And it ended up in the arms of Derek Bear. Came on in place of the injured Sean Jepson. Olsen at the foul line, looking to get rid of it, and does to Sterling. Now Baird. And over to Andres. Reed, short jumper. Wilson got a hand on it, deflected it to Ryder, and now Hamill will walk it up. Well, they want to walk it up, get a good play, make the hall play the defense. This is their style, they spread it out. Three point drive from the right by Wilson. Bounces high off the iron, rebounded by Reed. Well, Reed's been playing well. Reed averaging 10 points a game in the tournament. Actually, a little bit under a season average. Free drop by Olsen. A little too strong. Tapped up and in by Sterling. There's the boards right there. You can see a full court press now. Emma weaves his way through that. Pulls up in the lane. Dumps it to Ryder. Falling away. Puts it in. Nice play. They're tied at four. 6.03 to go. First quarter. Good ball movement by Hall. There it goes baseline, bouncing to the weak side. It's taken away by Joe Wilson. Sterling should have come and hit that ball right there. That was a good uh, penetration from the baseline. Kind of waited for it. Still going to get it. Siegfried finds Hammer. No up block. Blocked by Baird right to Olsen. There's a little ballet out there that time. 
Out it goes Andres in the corner. Now Olsen lobs it to Reed. By Olsen, the jump to Sterling, and Sterling has four points. He's playing under control this game. Sterling's been in foul trouble in both the games here. Doing it without this star. That's why I call it a team game. Hamill. Out it goes. Wilson spotting up for three. Go! Wilson, a 36% three-point shooter, buries that one, and it's 7-6, Nauvoo Calusa. Now Reed, the runner, got it. The inside points, uh, they're coming uh, somewhat with ease with Hall right now. They have a full-court press. They're pressing after every goal. Emma jumps, gets it to Griffiths. He sends it to the right corner. Wilson will fire from there again. This time, not enough. Wilson's not afraid to put it up. I mean, he's open, he, and he will shoot it. 141 three-point shots this season. Leading in, Andres. Reed got it back. Inside points. I'm telling you, they're, they're, they're facing the hole. I mean, now who wants a timeout? And they finally got it. Coach comes with 4.19 to go. First quarter. Reno Pinkston and his Nauvoo Calusa Vikings trail by three. 4.19 to go. Spring Valley Hall leads Nauvoo Calusa 10 to 7. Yvonne, you got some more information on Sean Jepson. Yeah, Jepson is going to play, but what they're, what they're going to have to do is put about three to five stitches in his knuckles at halftime, and they think that's going to help him with the bandage. But then also, Sterling has an, a back problem that they're also going to work on. He's had stiffness in his back, and Jepson hurt himself, we found out, by the cameraman. He got hit by the camera lens. Hmm. Uh -huh. But both those players are out there now. And they have a three-point lead, 10 to 7. Pressure here by Spring Valley Hall. I suggest leave Sterling alone. He's playing well right now. Siegfried to Hammer. Hammer had five assists in the semifinal victory over Farmington. Griffiths deflected. Ryder battling Kieran for it. That was a blocked shot from the outside, and the arrow points at the jump ball is called for Hall. Watch this block right here. Get to leave Sterling out. Boom. Wow. Stiff back and not. Leave him alone. He's all right. He's in the rhythm. Olsen to Jepson. Olsen working against Hammer. And it's stolen by Siegfried. And it's stolen back by Olsen. And a foul. A good aggressive play out here. And he had Navo. You look at this team and say, okay, they don't look very athletic. Boy, they move, they hustle, they, they just do the right thing and certainly run the plays well and they seem to be coached very, very well. And at Ridener, number 52, calls for the foul. Ridener, their leading rebounder, their second leading scorer on the season. Self shot out, there's the rebound by Ridener. That's the shot you want. That's the shot in the play you want to get it down low. And Sterling, nice little turnaround, just in and out. Wilson between the rings, off to Ryder. And back to Wilson, he'll take another three-pointer and makes another one. Well, they're going to live and die on that shot, because that's the one they're, they're giving him. That being Hall. It's actually Griffiths who leads the Vikings in three-point field goals, but tonight it's Wilson who's led him so far. He's got a pair, and he's not too shy to put it up. Jepson leans in. John Jepson with his first points. Looked okay there, Norm. Yes, he did. Ridner finds Griffiths in the lane. His first points, and we're tied at 12. It's going to be I think, a great ball game all the way down the wire. It seems that way. There's Olsen. Nice passing. Sterling kicks it outside. The three-pointer. Good there by Ryan Andres. Nice passing. What a tournament Ryan Andres has had. He's averaged 16 points a game. Averaged nine during the regular season. Shooting 63% from the floor. Now at the other end, Siegfried missing it. But came to Ryden. And it's stolen back by Spring Valley Hall. Get anticipation to get that ball back. And that's what's happening with Hall right now. Well, you're right. I, I just, uh, Andres is just having an outstanding series. Both. Hot. 
from the get-go. Another block. Sterling, I think, got a hand on that yes, shot by Wilson. So he's got at least two blocks. Jepson, he'll fire the three from the left. Off the front of the rim and taken by Hammer. Hammer. <laughs> David Hammer. H-A-M-M-A. Hammer. 5'9 senior. Now Griffiths in the lane. In and out. And Barron with it. Olsen pushes it quickly. And then Andre. I think the defender forgot there was another man back with him, but that was a nice heads up play. Got the roll break going. Got a little seven run uh, lead right now. Seven in a row for Spring Valley Hall. Wilson for three. Again! Joe Wilson. Block it. Whatever you want to do, he's shooting the same way, and he's getting open over there. Three three pointers here in the first quarter. He had 10 points in the semifinal win over Farmington. Well, he's firing away right now. Seems like it's the game plan, too. Andres thought about it. Up to Sterling, out to Olsen. Final minute, first quarter. Olsen bounces to Sterling. And Wilson got a hand in his face. Now we got a foul called on that particular play. I think Adam Kieran uh, was called for that foul. Kieran, we got a whole unit coming in for the Valley. I call him the Valley. They wanted to call the Hall. 34. Joey, Re <laughs> Joey <laughs> Reed. Derek Baird, 33, into the ball game. That seems a, to be a smart move. And you just played a game, you get some subs in there right now, the tired legs playing uh, earlier today. So right now, you may want to balance the attack of what uh, personnel you put on the floor, just for the sake of saving some legs. 30 seconds to go. A little too far for Siegfried. No, he got it. Now Hamill with it. Holds and looks things over, and the Vikings holding for the final shot. They're down 5-4 as we approach the end of the first quarter. Eight seconds, and Hammer goes to work. Two seconds, Hammer, the one-hander. No, and the first quarter is in the books. Spring Valley Hall leads by four after one. Welcome back to Carver Arena in Peoria, and I'm joined by Governor Jim Edgar. Governor, you've been coming here for many years now. Can you talk about the growth, growth you've seen in the tournament? Well, the state tournament's always been big. It's a great event in the state, and I'm just delighted to be here. This is my last time as governor, but it's a great uh, tradition and one that will continue into the 21st century. And how special is the Class A? It's just a great weekend for them. It's great because these small communities really know how to play basketball and enjoy it. So I'm glad to be here. Okay, thank you for your time. Dave, Norm, back to you. All right, thank you, Ivana, Governor Edgar. And that is true. The small communities know how to play basketball. 19 to 15, Spring Valley Hall leading Norville Calusa to start the second quarter. Later on, and Bob's going to give us a geography lesson, too. Small community's not a support basketball, too. Kind of good by Ryder. Nice play, nice little give and go. A little layup, uh, drill push. One of the first points in the paint for Nauvoo. Nauvoo. There's Jepson. Two points in the first quarter for Shaw on the fadeaway. Traveling prior to the shot. Mm. Well, one, one game you can do it, and one game you can't. There's Jepson with that right hand. As Yvonne told us, he'll have stitches at halftime. Did you ever get stitched up during a game? Uh, actually, I did. I was getting stitched up every day. <laughs> yeah, the right man in the shooting game, because that wasn't my thing. Jepson stole it. Ryder stole it back. Out to Griffiths. Doubles to Wilson. Baseline jumper, no good. Three good rebound. Just a match in that play. Wow, very aggressive, but uh, no results of points in that one. Ryder had it taken away. Wasn't going to stand for that. Now Andre fires for three. I, I, I'm telling you, they should find Andre's right now and stick with that to pattern wherever he's at right now and go with him. He's got the hot hand, and in between going low, you had Sterling, who's in uh, not in there right now, but go low with him. It's a good combination right now. Andres coming into this game in the tournament, 9 of 16 from three-point range. He's got a couple of them here tonight. 
22-17. Pass was deflected by Joey Reed and taken by Wolf by Olsen. Paul has some great anticipation in the defense tonight so far in this game. They, they kind of know where each pass is going, either deflection or, or an interception. Entry pass to Reed. Reed blocked and taken away by Joe Wilson. What a big time play that was. Yes, it was. He stood his ground, didn't go for any fakes, put the hand up and it was there. Ryder on fire from 17 feet away, and it's rebounded by Derek Baird. This game is tuning up to be a little physical, too. You can see these teams going at it in a more direct way, almost like if they don't, they don't like each other. Reed. Also, up for three. Here, muscles it up there. And Wilson off to Griffiths. Vikings ball down by five, five and a half to go, second quarter. And I'm sure these two teams have a great deal of respect for each other, but they are going at it there, baby. A little extra pushing here and there. Ryder, see that? I'm telling you, they're, they're going at it. They're going through picks instead of around them. They're, they're making a presence felt uh, out, in the, out in the court. Foul on Derek Baird. First foul on Baird, 6'5", senior. Co-captain, well, one of seven captains for the Spring Valley Hall. There's Nick Sterling, another one. Secret will trigger right baseline into Wilson. And now a hammer. Pump fake, gets it back from Griffiths. Up the secret again. There's Wilson. He's been hot from there, but he gets it to Griffiths. Griffin missed a shot in the middle of the foul. He's wide open. David Griffiths, three of three from the three point range and the win over Farmington this afternoon, averaging 16 points here in the tournament after averaging under 11 during the season. Well, he had a wide open layup for net and some good ball movement, but he just uh, kind of let that get away from him. That's the second foul, third on the Vikings. There's the steal, Hamlet, one on one against Reed. And Reed fouls him. The little bump. He said, no, you're not getting the layup, but he just did the body bump to the ground with the Yeah. Oh, you see it right here. Anticipated pass uh, was intercepted, and both teams are doing that very well today. Little bump. Not a bad foul. Fourth team foul on Spring Valley Hall. There he is looking <laughs> right at you. Yes, he is. Hammer buries the first free throw. He's a 56% free throw shooter. Reno Pinkston, the head coach, watched his team rally from 11 points down in the semifinal today to hand the Farmington Farmers their only loss of the year. On that, uh, shot. 46 to go until halftime. Spring Valley Hall leads Nauvoo Calusa 22 to 19. We'll be back. Well, this is our geography lesson for today. We are here, and this is Peoria. This is Nauvoo. This state appearance has really put them on the map. They're right on the border here of the Mississippi River. There's Iowa here, Missouri here. So that's your geography lesson. Now you know where they are. But <laughs> Wait a minute, Yvonne, what about Calusa? Well, you know, it, they wanted those people to call in so they can be represented, but I don't see Calusa on here. All I see is <laughs> Nabu and Neota, so they're going to have to let me know. That's the tri-state area. That's it. Yeah, I grew up in uh, Pennsylvania and West Virginia, Ohio. Ball goes to Reed. Oh, oh. Too strong, the weak side rebound by Secret. Nauvoo Calusa down by three with the ball. Ryder out on the perimeter. In the high post, it goes to Secret. It's got to be steps. And it is. Doug Secret, 6'1 senior. And so all with the ball with just over four minutes to go until halftime. A three-point lead. Andres nearly stolen again by Hamill. Well, Hamill's all over the place. I mean, he's hustling. He's there. Look at that anticipation. Switching 
That's what the defense is doing right now. A lot of switching. I like his good footwork. He moves. Eleven seniors, four juniors. No sophomores or freshmen on the Spring Valley Hall team. Nauvoo Calusa has four seniors, five juniors, one sophomore and one freshman. Out of bounds, Vikings ball. David Griffiths caused that foul. I mean, that ball to be thrown away. Anticipating that it was going to be thrown to one gentleman and it was uh, thrown to another and it went out of bounds. John Jepson, there you see turnovers, 11 so far in this game. Jepson getting set to check in for Spring Valley Hall. Elaine Ryder puts it up. And Sterling pulls it down. Both teams have gotten some good uh, looks at some good shots in the paint, but they're not falling. Now, that could be fatigue from playing earlier today. I mean, that little thing, that's why I find it very tough to understand why they play all on the same day, but I guess that's a Illinois tradition. Reed blocked by Wilson. Inside of three minutes. Here's Secret. Diagonal pass to Griffiths. Finds Ryder. Stripped with the ball and foul. He's still the one to put his hand in there. Might have been a charge, but he did reach in. One of those fouls. He's always on the borderline to me. Is he going to explode? Here's the reach. And might have gotten ball, but it still, you reach in on this level of ball, they're going to call it. That's the first foul on Sterling in this championship game. And Ryder at the free throw line where he's two for two tonight. We always have an idea of what he's thinking, but you just don't know. <laughs> and this is the first one. There's Sean Jepson. Five team fouls now on Hall. Seven in the ball game now for Widener. And it's a two-point game with 2.40 to go till halftime. Jepson brings the ball up this time. Olsen is out of the ball game. Reed prepared for three. Bounces off the iron. Here's Hammer. As we approach the two-minute mark. Again, Wagner. That's Sterling very aggressive. Very aggressive on the boards. And he, he gave a little shove. Sterling, as we mentioned earlier, he played defensive end at Vanderbilt University. And just about all the players on this Red Devils team play football. Well, in a small community, small town like that, usually if you're going to keep sports going, which I love. Everybody participates and plays all the time. I think it's good for you. 12 of the 15 players on the roster participate in football. Out to Bear for a three from the left. A little too strong. Jepson, nice job on the weak side boards. Reed, the put back. All right. Very aggressive, tough play. Both teams are playing. Eight for Jerry Reed. Four-point Hall lead. 1.20 to go till halftime. And they're letting them bang a little bit so, so far. Just call the reach-in stuff. Ball fake. And the hammer. We approach the final minute. Griffiths. Cross court to Siegfried. Hitting the deck. Offensive foul is going. Siegfried as Baird takes the charge. Take a look prior to that. At the other end, you'll see the shot. And then Jepson, great leaping one-handed rebound. Well, that was good, and they missed shot the left hand, but good put back by Reed on that play. Second chance, look at the Hall. Did the same thing to Leo this afternoon. Boy, 8-0. There's Reed. And the double figures with Tab, 26-20, final minute, second quarter. Inside play, physical play starting to lean toward the Hall. They're starting to get a little more of the easy buckets and then dominating the boards. And that's just the first period. I should say first quarter. Only 6.8 to go. I tell you, it's getting rough. Getting some elbows, getting some shots in there. 
Second That's foul called on Jepson. He's got just two points in the game. And the Vikings can hold for the final shot here. 16 seconds. The 54, Kenny Haas had the ball a moment ago. 10 seconds to go. Hammer will start to move now. Five seconds. Hammer spins. Blocked. Taken by Secret at the buzzer. No good. They got another shot at it. Yeah, they're going at it. We have reached the half of this 1998 Class A Championship game. Spring Valley Hall leads Nauvoo Calusa by six. Let's go to Yvonne Simmons. Coach, uh, really physical play. The refs are letting you bang. It's got to favor your team. Well, we think in the long run it'll be in our favor. You know, it's real physical down at both ends, and that's our kind of game, so hopefully we can take advantage of that in the second half. Now, Jepson, he only has two points. Is he doing okay, or is it really bothering him? Well, he's injured. Anytime you tape up the shooting hand, it's not good. You know, he got that cut on him there before the game started, so it's, uh, we hope we can get it fixed up here at halftime. It'll be a little better off. Thank you. We'll check on that situation. Dave, back to you. All right, Yvonne, thank you. So Coach Bryant and his Red Devils leading 26-20 over Nauvoo Calusa here at halftime. We'll be back with halftime activities from Peoria in just a moment. And welcome back halftime here at Carver Arena in Peoria. I'm Dave Edit with Norm Van Leer. The Spring Valley Hall Red Devils lead the Nauvoo Calusa Vikings here at the intermission 26 to 20 in this championship game. Right now we're going to see the other teams being presented with medals and trophies. The other teams which have participated here this weekend. Let's go to the public address announcer Paul Herzog. The Illinois High School Board of Directors attending tonight's game. Vice President William Wright of Savannah, Division 4. Secretary Gary Collins of Monmouth High School, Division 6. Mike Hawkins of Lexington, Division 5. Catherine Flanagan of Chicago Manley, Division 1. Patrick Sullivan of Roxana, Division 7. At this time, meet the Lions of Chicago Leo, who finished the 98 season in fourth place with their final record of 26 and 8. First, meet the principal of Leo High School, Robert Foster. <laughs> Athletic director, Edward Adams. Head coach, Mike Mandarino. <laughs> Assistant coach, William Hawkins. <laughs> Assistant coach, Bob Shablowski. <laughs> Assistant coach, Patrick Flanagan. <laughs> Manager, Kirkland Townsend. Now, here are the Lions. Number 10, Mike Myers. <laughs> Number 12, we'll be Eldred back Lewis. With more of the presentation of the medals here at halftime. Spring Valley Hall leading Nauvoo Calusa 26 20. Back with more in a moment. <laughs> and welcome back. The ceremonies continue here at halftime. The third place team, the Farmington Farmers, being honored right now. There's Tom Rizzo, the coach. Got the purple uh, outfit on. <laughs> Resplendent with that oh. purple and the purple boutonniere. Michael Hayes. Great year Farmington had. Capped it with a win in the third place game over Chicago Leo earlier this evening.
Seth Nelson, their All-State performer. We've got a lot more ahead as the halftime festivities continue here in Peoria, Spring Valley Hall, leading Nauvoo Caluso by six at the half. We'll be back. And welcome back to Peoria. Halftime, Spring Valley Hall leading Nauvoo Caluso 26-20. There is the fourth place trophy, the Chicago Leo. And the third place trophy presented to the Farmington Farmers just a few minutes ago. And there is another trophy to be presented here a bit later on this evening. That will go to the champion. I'm Dave Bennett with Norm Van Leer, Spring Valley Hall, leading Nauvoo Calusa at halftime by a score of 26 to 20. And uh, so far, I think, as Coach Brian mentioned to Yvonne, things are probably going to Spring Valley Hall's advantage in terms of the physic, uh, physicalness of this game, Norm. Well, that's their approach. That's how they play, a good, tough defense, plus the size. They do have uh, seem to be a little bigger size, and uh, they're going at it. It's a team that seems to respect each other, but at the same time, they look at each other, I don't like you. <laughs> and they're, and they're, they're throwing a little extra at it. Uh, uh, hits that I normally haven't uh, seen in the, the re you know, respective games. Well, let's take a look. First half highlights between the Vikings and the Red Devils early on. You'll see Nick Sterling go to work underneath. Yeah, a good solid layup, but he's going at it. He's playing a steady game uh, compared to the last few uh, that he's played. He's staying out of foul trouble, playing a little smart heads up. Joe Wilson took shots for the Vikings. Buries a three-pointer there. He's had a couple blocks, but he's also still taking steady. There's the only basket of the first half for Sean Jepson. Well, he, you know, he got into his red rage, ran into a cameraman, cut his hand, so it hurt a little bit. Ryan Andres from Craig Olson there, and then Andres will launch a three-pointer. Andres with a big first half as he hit for 10 points for Spring Valley Hall. Andres has been on. He's been a very steady ball play in his whole tournament. Joey Reed is there to follow the miss by Jepson. Reed in the first half with 10 points, and our Ameritech first half stats show 29% shooting by Nauvoo Calusa. No doubt about it, and uh, the one stat still sticks out to me is, is the fact that that uh, second chance points, Dave, eight for Hall, zero for Nauvoo. 26-20, Hall leads it here at halftime, back with third quarter action in a moment. We get set for the third quarter, there's Sean Jepson. Got the stitches done at halftime, three stitches on his knuckle, and We'll see how he does here in the third quarter. Right now, Yvonne Simmons is standing by with Nobu Calusa coach Reno Pinkston. Yvonne? Dave, coach, you talked about it's very physical in there, but you're concerned about rebounding. Yeah, uh, we're, we're making a miss our first shot most of the time, but we're not checking the big boys off on the board, so we've got to make a conscious effort in the second half of keeping them off and not letting them have the easy ones on second shot and making sure that we try to keep Jepson in check because, you know, he can go off at any time. And also be aware of number 22 on the planet because he can shoot the three. Okay, thank you. You know what? I'm kind of concerned about your voice. Hope you have some of that left in the second half. Dave, back to you. <laughs> All right, thank you. There's David Griffiths in the first half. Just two points on one of four shooting. He has two personal fouls. So the two key players we talked about at the start of the telecast tonight, Jepson and Griffiths each with just two points in the opening 16 minutes. Third quarter is underway, Hall with the ball. Out it goes, Andres for three, bounces high off the rim. Reed got his hands on it but couldn't control it in bounds. Well, he had position, had the ball. If he uh, would have had control of that ball, it would have been uh, right back up to two points. And that's what uh, Coach was talking about right there, about uh, controlling the board and getting some type of balance in there. Reed had five rebounds in the first half. Wilson firing. Sterling with the defensive rebound. Olsen ahead to Jepson. Basket waved off. Foul oh. I, I didn't see the play so quick. I thought he was going to call steps. There you see, well, get the replay here. He comes down. Little move, hesitation. That's around Siegfried. Ah, yeah. Okay. He called that reach in, a little, little, basically the way to physically play a little ticky tack, but 
nonetheless a foul. Called on Hammer. Ball goes in underneath to oh, Sterling. Sterling. Good to play from the inside. That's a no-no. You playing defense on the uh, your away goal, defending goal. You got to give him the outside shot. Not a layup like that. Hall scores for first points of the second half. We're calling a tight game all of a sudden. Man. I, honestly, the physical play, the elbows, they're going to settle this down because it's subtle elbows. It's not just outright physical, uh, dirty shots. It's just going through a physical, little extra elbow, and uh, they're, they're calling that just keep it uh, at even pace, I believe. Governor Edgar and the rest of this sellout crowd looking on as Seifert picks up his second foul. On the offensive end. Great foul on extended left out to Jepson. Inside of seven minutes, third quarter. There's also scoreless in the game. Too far for Joey Reed in the low post. Out of bounds. Vikings ball. You know, it's still a good basketball game, but I'll go out and let him say this. I still say some of the little things you're seeing right there, throwing away the ball. And that's fatigue a little for playing all day. I don't care how you put a kids or not. That's a tough task to ask. Reidner from 15 feet away. Griffiths tapped it, and it's taken by Andres. Andres, the runner. No, Reidner rebounds. Layup missed right there. Griffiths hustles it the other way. Dumps it off to Hammer. That was a tough shot. Oh, oh, man. Man. Jepson got up on that one on the defender to come back, but Griffith is this, this uh, one of those type of guys that just physically doesn't look quick, but he got down the court and handles the ball. Well, got that shot for him. Well, that's certainly be a mistake to as Jepson gets his second field goal right off and over Calusa based on the fact they were trailing at halftime. They were trailing by 11 late in the third quarter today. They came storming back to beat Farmington. Hit a couple of big three-pointers. Kind of ignited them. Spring Valley Hall. Better way with a step, I thought, there. Griffiths got a shot. His first points in the second half, and it's back to a six-point game. Griffiths has that football body playing a guard. He's got some quick feet. That was a tough shot. Foul called. Good color. I think they got Red Ridner. Ridner and uh, 52 anyway. Red Ridner, his second foul. The inbounded right baseline. Also makes the over the shoulder catch. Up top, Andres back out to Olsen for three. Off the side of the rim. And an offensive foul call on Joey Reed. They're calling a tight game right now all of a sudden. Fouls in places uh, and things they like go. And that's not bad. You know, when you feel the presence of a game, uh, getting a little more physical, you start calling things. Settle everybody down. Reed, I, I can even see his uh, frustration of not understanding. He's been banging the whole first half for most of the game, and all of a sudden, boom, he's not allowed to do it. Griffiths, ball fake, and up top to Wilson. Hard bounce from the hammer to Secret in the low block. And to me, that's a, it's, a, it's a fatigue foul to me. They, they, they normally have a player like this, just solid defense. They're reaching in. And that's it to me a little side of fatigue, and it certainly should be after playing earlier today. 30 to 24, Spring Valley Hall leads it. 4.53 to go, third quarter. We'll be back. And welcome back. Spring Valley Hall leading by six. Let's go to Ravon. Hey guys, Coach Bryant was talking about how it seemed like they were in a hurry to get a shot off. He wanted him to take time, work it around, make everything count. He said, I don't see a lot of enthusiasm out there. You guys, this is a state game. This is what we've been working for all year round. Let's get it together and play. Ball went into Wilson. And out of bounds to Spring Valley Hall. Secret couldn't control it along the baseline. This is what they've been playing for. Yes, it's what they've been playing for, but I tell you, these guys are tired. They bust their rear ends and playing all day, and you can't help but be a little tired. I don't care how much of a 
you know, the, the, the game's on the line is a state championship game. And, man, I mean, I think they're bust, busting and, and playing hard, but a little fatigue. No look pass intercepted by Wilson. I can see the little subtle mistakes that they, you don't normally see with these respective teams and how they approach. It's mindset right now. It's just their mind's tired a little bit. Stops are not coming easily here. Griffith doubles it off. Reidner, good. Emmett Reidner. He put up a ball movement on that one right there, and he got some points in the paint. Two or three guys touch the ball, boom, you got a layup. Well, a little self jumping. Within four now. Reed down the lane. Not too hard. Don't call over the back. It's Sterling. I thought he had inside position myself. Second foul on Sterling. Team fouls now even at three apiece here in the second half. Sterling. 6'7", 215 pounds. And the Vikings have the ball. A chance to get within two. Trailed by six at halftime. Screen set by Wilson. Griffiths to Wilson for three. Good! That's an excellent shot. Good team play. And he's, good. he's back in the mix. As far as getting a shot, I said he was going for a while with Wilson. But I look at him, the top of the key is still in the corners right now. And right now, it seems the Nabu has the energy level going their way. Got to go steps in there. Battling on Baird. Momentum. Tangible at the moment. Griffiths out to Wilson for his fourth three-point field goal of the game. Doesn't need a shooter. He doesn't mind shooting and block or not. He's gonna make it. He'll take it. Averaging 12 points in the tournament. Season high was 28 against Hamilton. I'll tell you another thing you the Hall hasn't seen much of. Good down low kick. There's a lot of these picks that are being applied by Nabu. Nabu has the lead. Race for three. Olsen trying to outrace Griffiths. Can't do it. Griffiths will break away. One on one takes it in and missed the layup. And then underneath the foul is called. Siegfried walks it off. Well, coach wanted a goaltending here because they're smacking the backboard. A good little shove right there. Wow. Listen. Yeah. To the impact. That's called bone on wood, my friend. Yeah. No one been there before. But a little, did a little push to shove. Uh, and once again, to the position themselves. Maybe I'm saying too much and making too much of it. Widener leans in. Jepson goes up and gets the rebound. Boy, had a shot there. Leon. That was the third foul, by the way, on Reed. Hammond nearly stole it. They triple team jumps it out to Andres. It was blocked. Wyber catches it. Nearly threw it away, but Hammond saved it in bounds. A lot of action going up and down, but not a whole lot of results of anything. Back and forth, up and down. There are no complaints here by Nabu Calusa because they have grabbed the one-point lead. A 7-0 run in the last two minutes and 40 seconds plus. Looking to add to that. Hammer bouncing to Griffiths. Yeah, I don't see the same zip that I saw in Olsen basically out there playing defense when he was earlier today. The guy was just getting around. I bounced it. Baird rebounds. Yes. It's not like they're trying. I want to put emphasis on that. They're busting their butts out there. There's Olsen in the front court. By Sterling in and out. He's having a tough luck there in the shot. He's an excellent shot down low. Nice pass. Good ball movement. Turn around. In and out. He's a 56% shooter. Now they can take that shot all day long. That's what they want. Just got a cannon. Ammo. Another corner. Ridner. Finds Griffiths. Foul on extended right. 15 footer by Secret. Taken off the rim by Sterling. Both teams running well in place, getting open shots, just not falling as it goes on a consistent basis to get those open shots. 
These two teams, 63 wins between them. We're in the final minute of the third quarter. They're doing a good job of Jefferson not to get him an opportunity not to get a shot off. Even though he had an injury early part in this game. Andre fires good. Two-point basket from Ryan Andre. His first points of the second half turned 18 yesterday and celebrated with 18 points in the <laughs> quarterfinal game. Always will remember that. Final half minute of the third quarter. Vikings down by one, holding for the final shot of the quarter. This is going to be a wild trip. No doubt one. about it. I'm saying when you Jepson just with uh, one field goal, out of this uh, campaign, I do believe. And you're in a ball game like this leading. That means everybody else has stepped up. So that's a plus for Hall, I think. Five seconds. Griffiths for three. He's strong. There, the rebound. That'll do it after three quarters. Talk about your March Madness. <laughs> really, way you want to put it, the way I'm describing it, this is a good ball game and a good championship play. 32-31 at the end of three. We'll be back with the fourth quarter. We begin the fourth quarter here, Carver Arena in Peoria. The Nauvoo Calusa Vikings fans there making their presence felt. Their team down by one to begin the fourth quarter, 32-31, the top ranked and unbeaten Spring Valley Hall. Oh, good in and out by Wilson. Good play, just didn't fall. Excellent play. Jepson, oh, oh and rebounded by Ryder. Jepson hit the deck. Uh, maybe by your contact on that one. Nauvoo Calusa outscored the Red Devils 11 to 6 in the third quarter. And in the previous two games that Spring Valley Hall had played here in the third quarter, they had outscored their opponents. 33 to 12. That had been their big quarter. Well, that's uh, what they needed to get back in the ball game, and they're there now. Now it's to maintain a balance of execution, rebounding, and all those particular things you need to do to win basketball games. Good ball movement right now, but not going anywhere at all. So one point lead for Spring Valley Hall. Whips it outside to Olsen. Reed. I think Wilson got a hand on that one. Wilson's a big factor both offensively and defensively in this game. Good ball movement. I think that's the shot you would like to take. And uh, just not hitting. I'd say there's two good defensive teams playing right now. Wilson had three blocks in the first half. He just picked up another one. Right here. He doesn't get, get faked out to, to, to uh, do anything. Just studs his ground. Hammer. Mm -hmm. Novo Colusa takes the lead. Someone lost a man on that one. And they're moving well without the ball. That's Novo. There's Jepson stumbled. Well, he got tripped. He was tripped. Uh, too uh, big and split. Not to create foul. Uh, David Hanna, they'll take it out. And here it is as Jepson goes to work offensively. Yep. Here you go. You got tripped. Eric Bryant. Veteran coach of these Red Devils. Jepson finds Sterling. Mm. Tough call to make. This time, they call Siegfried. I think you're playing good defense, and all of a sudden, uh, there's a foul call. That's his third foul, 15th foul. Do you realize, Norm, that Spring Valley Hall has shot one free throw in this game and missed it? And he lost the ball coming in bounds. Three on one, Griffiths, Wilson, missed the layup, Sterling rebounds. Good defense because he just squarely missed it. Jepson pulls up, takes the three into the corner, saved inbounds to Secret. And just now, Ryder makes his way back to the court. An outstanding save, and you see if they can capitalize on that. And right now, Navu seems to have the, the extra step. 
And don't forget, they played earlier, had a little longer time to rest. It could be the difference. And out, cross to Wilson for three, in and out. Wilson's got a lot of in and out shots right now. Good looks. Fortunately for Noble Palouse, he's had enough that have gone in and stayed in. Right. Jackson. We saw him do that a couple times last night when he just square stuff. <laughs> Acts as if he's faking and then yeah, takes boom. the shot. Knocks it down. Reed outside. Johnson. He'll take it from there. Whoa. Sterling yeah. takes it in. Sterling's having the ball game. Eight for Sterling. Hall by one. 4.43 to go. That was a nice, soft touch on that uh, tip. <laughs> Only fitting the way this weekend has gone here in Peoria that this one go down with the wire. Right near the turnaround. Good. Starting to light up, starting to warm up a little bit as far as the scoring. You know, they don't look so tired to me right now, Norm. But you know, it's not too tired. It, it, it's just a little fatigue type of mistakes that you make. And more of the brain tired uh, comes about with that. If you could say such a thing. Been here before. I just know seeing what I'm seeing now. But it, they're, they're going to move. They're going to hustle. They're going to do that. They're young. They can do that. Midway through the fourth quarter. Three point try by Andres. Chased down in the corner by Jackson. With Reed screening for him. Takes it to the top of the key, out to Olsen. Hammer got a hand on that pass, but the Red Devils kept it. Now Jefferson finds Reed looking to post up. Spins in the lane, the one-hander. Banks off the glass, taken by Seifer. Once again, not a block shot, but the guy that made a difference in there in that one was Wilson in his defense. Three shots at it that time. Griffiths finds Ryder, 15 footer, blocked by Sterling. Sterling has had about three or four blocks like that. He approached the three minute mark. Bring Valley Hall with the ball down one. You know, Navos have done a good job taking away some guys that normally do the scoring. And at this particular part of the game, Andres has taken him away. Gamble does it twice. Yes. What a defensive display yes. by yes. Hammer. He was there. He put the hammer to him. He's not, not once, but twice. Like volleyball, yes, indeed. 2.56 to go in regulation. Novel Calusa leads Spring Valley Hall 35 to 34. Timeout on the floor. We'll be back. The telecast rights to this game have been granted to Fox Sports Chicago by the Illinois High School Association, and a reproduction and rebroadcast of the boys' IHSA championships are not permitted without the express written consent of Fox Sports Chicago and the IHSA. 2.56 to go, fourth quarter here in Peoria. Novu Calusa with the ball and a one-point lead on top-ranked and unbeaten Spring Valley Hall. It'll be some story if you come in here and beat three unbeaten teams. Down the stretch run here. Defeated AC Central. Defeated Farmington. Now going for the trifecta. Griffiths will take the three-pointer. The weak side rebound by Wilson out to Hammer. And another try. He'll put it up again. And this time he makes it. Good shot. Griffin's got a second chance and knocked it down. And it's a four-point Novel Calusa lead. Jepson. Griffiths rebounds. Trying too hard. And this team, Novel, just having the patience. They can smell it a little bit. It's down to two, two minute mark. Two minutes to go. Fourth quarter. Four-point game. Griffiths. Double team near midcourt. Knocked down. I can hear that one too. I, I can feel that one. <laughs> oh yeah. How about that last three quarter by David Griffiths? Yeah, he was deep way out and he got a second chance to get it. Second chance points stuff to keep up for him. Oh, that been that. 67% from three-point range in the tournament coming in tonight. That was his first three-pointer of the game, but it could not have come at a better time. And the foul was on Jepson. 
his third foul. Sean Jepson with just four points in the game. And this is a guy who scored 51 in the championship game a year ago. But again, we won't know till after the game how that injury affected his shooting hand. Well, obviously, they put a different uh, approach to the game. It seemed like they came out of the box not quite as pumped up, not quite as ready. But with a little mystique in the air of what's going on. So uh, that might have set the tempo. But at the same time, we got a good ball game going on. And you still have a minute 53, so we'll see what happens. There's Jepson. Said he would. Four points on two of seven shooting, two turnovers. You know, at the same time, this. Let's get some credit over to Coach Reno. Oh. I mean, he's got his team, and he said at halftime, we got to make adjustments in some areas. They've cut down, and one thing he did mention, I think is a key right now, is Andres has not been a big part of the offense. And he's been a big factor in this. And a foul at midcourt. So they're doing things, as far as I can see, they haven't been doing before. And that was just, uh, just not thinking here. I mean, you know. That's number five on Joey Reed. So he's done. Joey big, Reed. Big, 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 big. Absolutely. And the one you want to go inside and also some rebound. Leaves the game with 10 points. And Nauvoo Pelusa will attempt the first free throws by either team in the second half. Widener at the line. He was three or four in the first half. Widener now with 14. Five point lead, 152 to go. And they're feeling good about themselves. All they have to do is maintain the patience. Second one. That's a sign. Yeah. That's a sign, I'm telling you. That is a sign when you clank it like that and it goes right in. Sterling, up top there. Out to Andres. Goes to Sterling again. A shoot clock by Wilson. Wilson. Picked up off the floor by star. Widener. Star of this game. Five blocks at least by Wilson. Well, the star of this game. And a blocking foul called on Sean Jepson, and that on Jepson is number four. Let me put it to you this way. The Hall is starting to lose a bit of its grip on being cool, and you know now we can feel it. They lead by six, and Griffiths will step to the line. He is their second-best free throw shooter at 82%, but 91% in the tournament. In and out. Okay. <laughs> That's still a lot of time, guys, but you can feel the Vikings uh, in some other control. The good defense, that, that's where they've won this game, and Wilson with his block shots. And another rebound. Hammer rebounding the miss by Baird, and Sterling will have to foul with 106 to go. And third foul on Sterling. This is going to be the Hoosier story when you talk, when you want to get down to it. This team comes here and knocks off these undefeated big boys or teams of uh, record wise big boys. Except it's in the right state. It's in the right state. <laughs> Griffiths right back at the line. Yes, indeed. A one and one for David Griffiths, who missed a moment ago. Didn't miss that one. It's all about the free throws now. Joey Reed over on the bench. Seven point lead. Olsen rebounds. Jepson the three. Good. Sean Jepson, his first three-pointer of the game, and it comes with 58.4 to go. It brings Hall within four. Well, their ritual is there. Now they have to play the D or foul right away. Samantha making free throws right now. Here it is. Jepson pulls up, takes it over Siegfried, who contested the shot. Mm. And it's a four-point game. 58.4 to go in regulation. A year ago, the championship game went to overtime. Warsaw hit the late three-pointer. Eisler hit it for Warsaw to send the game into the extra period. Warsaw beat Spring Valley Hall there. It was a great game last year. This is a good game. This is an excitement. All games 
have been good. It has been a tremendous weekend here. And everybody, the Illinois High School Association of City of Peoria has done a magnificent job. We've got another weekend of it next week. The yes, Boys Double A Tournament. And we'll be here. Vikings. They lead by four. <laughs> 41 37, 58 point four to go, and Siegfried to throw it in left baseline. That's what a steal. No. Foul right there. Next week, March Madness continues here on Fox Sports Chicago. Friday, we'll bring you the quarterfinal games. And then on Saturday, the semifinals, the March Madness special, and the championship game next Saturday night, all right here on Fox Sports. Uh, uh, right here at Carver Arena. I remember in 1965, March 20th, in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, we won the state championship. 31 and 0. Emma missed the free throw. Well, that was just the best thrill, the biggest thrill I've ever had in my entire basketball career. Was winning high school state champion. Emma airballed that one. Wow. You hit the free throws now. You, you got a different part of the ball game. They come out hit a tray or two and come back with a steal again or deliver a foul. All must score here though. One way or the other, they must score here and then foul. Well, they got the right hand. Jepson, one-hander, good! Did you see that shot? My goodness! Sean Jepson with 46.7. Mm, nice move. It's all down to the point of uh, making your free throws right now. It's not new. Not booing to make. Look at this shot right here. Stop. Well, Oliver Wilson, who's blocked a handful of shots tonight, Jepson elevates and then gets it around Wilson. Got a timeout, so you get it in. You got plenty of time still because it's the free throw line that's hurting up. Now, the, you make your free throws, you got to get the ball game. Jepson has scored five straight for Spring Valley Hall to bring them to within two. 41 39, 46.7 to go. Jepson was just on the bench. Now he's at the scorer's table, ready to run. They want him to get in foul trouble. And a quick foul. He's got four fouls. He's yeah. in it. No. <laughs> he's he's well, in it. Sterling. I mean, without fouling out. You don't want him fouling out. So put somebody else in there on a defensive minded situation. And now it's just up to them to make the free throws. Navo's got to make free throws and force uh, Hall to come down to score. But that's the pressure when you're playing with such young people. Well, Ryder has done a good shot at the line, a good job at the line. He is five out of six tonight for the free throw line, and he'll be there now. Well, we'll see. This is where Caruso shoots 68% from the line as a team. Three points yeah. yeah. That's a big one. That's a big one. He's smiling. Ryder's loving this. Four-point game, 45 seconds to go. Not that much time. You got to do something. New possession game. Spring Valley Hall. Also moves right. Up top. Andre's open for three. In and out. Off the hands of Hammer. Chased down in the corner by Jepson. Steps through a double team. Gets it to Andre's. 23 seconds to go. Jepson with it. Well, you got too much driven. You got to do something with it. Had to pick it up. Now Olsen. He'll fire. Whistle. Offensive foul. You gotta be, I didn't see it, but I, let me, that was a big call. Huge point one. And Olsen called for the charge. I've got to see that again. Just... I've got to see that again. I don't know. Let's see if he push off. Ooh, All right, call. Jepson gets the ball to him. Right there with that left arm. Oh. And a quick foul by Hall with 14.5. Let's play this way. 
By right, it's a foul. But it's still one of those things I don't know if it's that strong enough you can call it. But he pushed off. Let's face it, he pushed off. Abu Palusa has an enrollment of 136 students. Abu Palusa and Neota. <laughs> Yvonne showed us yeah, the tri-state area of Missouri, Iowa. Look at the free throws difference. Ryder again. Wow. We can melt that one. He's made six in a row, five here in the second half. In fact, all of them in the fourth quarter. That's pressure. That's Another one. That's pressure. Six-point lead, two-possession game, 12 seconds. Andres fires. Get up, get up. Rebound, Baird. He'll take the three with four seconds. That's it. Championship. The 1998 Class A title goes to the Vikings of Novo Calusa in stunning fashion. 45 39. Uh, you can't help but feel bad for all, but you got to feel good for Nabu. You got to feel good for him. They have knocked off three undefeated teams. Despair for Spring Valley Hall. Losing in the championship game for the second year in a row, but jubilation out on the floor. Look at this celebration. And the despair evident there, Jerry Reed. Over on the bench, his teammates. They were ranked number one from the preseason on. Yeah. It's law of averages. We said at the top of the whole thing a day ago. That will always go against you when you come in here undefeated. As averages go. Vikings players hoisted Emmett Ridner up there. But did he do the shooting. job at the line or yes, what? Yes, indeed. That's what's all. All he had to do is make free throws. And there's Joe Wilson. He gets it right now. Sean Jepson looks on as his high school career comes to an end. Great player. What a brilliant career he's had. I don't know where he's going, but a great player. He's going on to Division I. Yes, indeed. I told you I'm going to force him to the Chicago area. Great, great, great player. But boy, your hats off to Nabu. What a... Emmett no. Reidner, I think, is a worthy candidate for our Lincoln Mercury player of the game. He hit some points in the stretch run and a free throw line there. Pressure is what it's all about. And this young man handled it. And the night man won it. Emmett Reidner, 6'2", junior center. We'll take a break. We'll come back with the post-game festivities. Continuing here from Carver Arena, Novo Calusa. State champions for 1998. Calusa defeats Spring Valley Hall 45-39 to win the Illinois Class A Boys Championship. There are the Vikings, Emmett Reidner, our player of the game with 19 points, 9 of 10 from the free throw line. And let's take a look at our Pepsi play of the game. It'll come from beyond the three-point line, courtesy of double zero David Griffiths, his only three-pointer of the game. But it leads the Vikings to this stunning victory over Spring Valley Hall. And on the floor, the trophy presentations, Illinois Governor Jim Edgar to the left there holding the IHSA banner. Let's go right now to Yvonne Simmons. Yvonne? Yep. I know. Coach, they're going to have a parade for you. How do you feel right now? It's the best feeling I've had my entire life. I, that, that's as good as it gets. This is incredible. Talk about your team. You've been balanced all year long offensively, but it's the defense that came through. 
This is the best team I've ever seen at this level. And I mean the word team really exemplifies these guys. I've seen better athletes, better basketball players, but I've never seen a better team than this one right here. We enjoyed watching them go have fun. Go get your trophy. Party, party, party. Okay. Dave, back to you. Reno Pinkston, the victorious head coach. I'm sure he doesn't mind being a bit raspy voice. Yeah, you know, he said it uh, very well there. It's the best team because I said at the top of the show, it didn't look like uh, athletic-wise they can get up and down the floor and do things, but man, a team. Just, just a great team effort, and uh, everybody in the individual department contributed to make it a team. He said when they were down by 11 today in their semifinal game against Farmington, he was never worried. He had the confidence all along that they would come back and win, and well, they sure did. Well, you know, some teams uh, bring that to you, and you don't worry about it, and in some other areas, Teams don't uh, display that, but this uh, basketball team I took a good look at. Every someone always pick up the tempo for this team. Coach Eric Bryant of Spring Valley Hall receiving his medallion as the second place team in this tournament. Spring Valley Hall making its second straight second place finish here. And the rest of Coach Bryan's staff being honored. The Hall High School cheerleaders, many of the tears in their eyes. You can understand how they feel right now. They had those cameras ready, and this isn't what they expected. <laughs> I've, I've tell you, and down through the high school years, I know my first two years in high school, we, we, we eventually lost to the state champions, uh, one being the Union Town team of Western Pennsylvania. And, and you know, the tears and the and all of that hit, but my senior year paid off. At least they get the taste of the victory of winning the state championship. John Jepson now will receive his medallion. And one can only imagine what he's thinking right now. Nine points tonight for Jepson, but he nearly rallied them single-handedly there in the final minute. Yeah, he did. Ryan Andres. The other members, there are an embrace between Eric Bryant and his star player. Toughest moment for a coach. Oh, know, yeah. Especially a high school coach. Yes, it is. And uh, some high school coaches don't experience this because they don't get this far. And when you get this far, to experience it, if nothing else, that's the greatest thrill in the world, to at least experience something of this nature. You would like to be on the other side of it, but that's good for life, you know that. It just gives you a little taste of what's uh, out here in the real world. That's what I love about sports. Teach you to get up the next morning and just go at, at the world again. That's Joey Reed. Adam Curran, who is about as fiery a player as oh. demonstrative as anybody on that team. And you better believe it. Doesn't have the same bounce in his walk right now that we saw earlier. It's, it's a heartbreaking scene for Spring Valley Hall, but Derek Baird stepped up to the podium a moment ago when he got his medallion. He smiled and blew a kiss to the Spring Valley Hall fans. Yeah, well, that's, that's what it's all about. <laughs> 32 and 1 for Spring Valley Hall. And Nick Sterling, the Spring Valley Hall Red Devils. And now Marble Kalusha gets the cheer. And the presentation of the championship medallions. Athletic director, Coach Reno Pinkston, gets his medallion. Assistant coach, Frank Gayton. Well, Pinkston's done an outstanding job. I'm telling you, he's... Well, he's done a tremendous job. Yeah. The rest of the basketball staff. Managers, trainers. What a proud moment for Nauvoo Calusa.
This is this is what I love about sports in this level with what it does to the community. You know, I, Yvonne and I were talking when we had dinner after the first game uh, this evening. How the support of, of your your schools like like this away from maybe the city, because the city nowadays have so many ball players from all over the section playing in one school where you don't usually get a student body together to follow them as well as you do in the past days. I mean, you got some that are there, but it makes a big difference when you're going to school all over the place. And now the players being honored. Marshall Stout, junior forward. Ryan Griffiths, sophomore guard. Receive there. There's Kenny Haas. He played a few minutes tonight. Paul Getz, reserve forward. And you always get that. Uh, you gotta feel happy for the, the the underdog too. You know, it's, it's, it's a telling story. Joe Wilson. What a game he had yes. tonight in this championship game. Here's Brian Griffiths. Hey, I tell you, his shot turning around. The big three-pointer, the player of the game by Pepsi, that turned around. The shot of the game, I should say. Emmett Ridner, our player of the game. Doug Siegfried. You can only imagine the celebration that's on now in Nauvoo, although the whole town's yeah. here. No, I was going to say, no, it's here. here. <laughs> yeah. They're here. And the Vikings of Nauvoo Calusa, Class A champions for Illinois in 1998. Now the trophy presentation. First for second place, Spring Valley Hall. Joey Reed holds the second place trophy aloft. The Red Devils, runners up for 1998. And across the way, the Vikings presented with the championship trophy, state champions, 1998, the Nauvoo Calusa Vikings. Take this from the old Skyliners group of my day. Someone's got to win and someone's got to lose. In this case, the Hall says, why does the loser have to be me? And I think Reno Pinkston is awfully glad that he is on the winning side. The winning end tonight. 45-39. Malvu Calusa wins it to claim this Class A championship. And complete the season with a record of 32 and 3. It's a record that won't soon be forgotten. No, no. Along the Mississippi River. Well, I can tell you, this is always fun for me. But this part of it, this is why I kind of, you know, you just hate to see someone lose when you got two teams playing so hard when you get to this point. You just hate to see it. But you got to feel proud and great when you see a winner. I love, I just love high school basketball. I love the amateur side of things. Well, it's been a great weekend here and a great season for Spring Valley Hall and for Nauvoo Calusa. Eric Bryant, the head coach, he'll have other opportunities, no doubt. But that's little consolation at this particular moment. But for the Vikings, the celebration is on. A heroic performance here in Peoria this weekend as Nauvoo Calusa takes the state championship in Class A for 1998. Norm, it's been a lot of fun. This David, has been a, certainly has. a great weekend here. We've seen some great basketball. And, uh, you know, it was a fitting finish because we saw a lot of uh, exciting games, games that went down to the wire. This one certainly did right in the final minute of this game. 
uh, the Red Devils still yeah. had a chance. Well, right certainly did. What I enjoyed is the mixture and, the, and uh, out with the fans, the kids and everything. It was just a great time. I had a, a wonderful time down here. Well, it's been terrific. And don't forget, we've got a lot more basketball coming your way next weekend here at Carver Arena, the AA Championship. So we'll wrap it up. The IHSA Boys Class A Basketball Tournament comes to an end. We need to give a special thanks to Dave Fry, Jim Flynn, Don Robinson, and the entire staff, the Illinois High School Association. They always do so much behind the scenes to make what we do look good. We appreciate all of their help. For Yvonne Simmons, Norm Van Leer, and our entire trio video crew, I'm Dave Edit saying so long for now. Once again, congratulations to the 1998 IHSA Boys Class A State Champions, the Vikings of Nauvoo, Calusa, who win it here 45-39. Next weekend, March Madness continues here on Fox Sports Chicago. We'll present the Boys Class AA Tournament beginning with quarterfinal play live Friday at noon. Fox Sports News is coming up next. The preceding has been a presentation of Fox Sports Chicago and Intersport Television. Good night, everybody.